Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We gonna do it together. We gonna do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word, my nigga. Go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too. I almost died. And I gotta read this script from all these good white people. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? You already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? Today we want to talk about black men in dresses, comedian in, in dresses, this whole conspiracy of black men in entertainment wearing dresses to be successful because the, I guess the white supremacist structure wants to emasculate them. Yes, let's talk about that. <laughs> Hey, I'm Queen. Welcome to the Mix Vixen channel. If you're new here, hey, boo. And if you're not new here, thanks for coming through again. I appreciate you. Today, we're going to talk about black men in dresses. Before we get into that, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by lovely patrons of Mix Vixen. Become a patron for as low as $2 a month to help sustain this wonderful platform that you love because you love it. And you'll get some exclusive content from me. If subscriptions is not your thing, because I know everything is a damn subscription now, but you still want to give me a little tip and hit me on a cash app or on the Venmo, I will gladly <laughs> take your money <laughs> yeah and a big thank you in advance to everyone because i know all of you are going to do this everyone who comments or gives me a thumbs up on this video thank you i fucks with you let's get started so recently on the shay shay club i did not know that that's what that man called his show cat william broke the internet on the shay shay club with his colorful stories some of them rang true some of them rang like he's a performer and one thing that stood out about what he brought up while he was on the shay shay club or club shay shay was black comedians and dresses and he brought up many comedians that have worn dresses i think he brought up well he didn't bring them up but a lot of them have been at one point of their comedic career have dressed up as women so we have Martin Lawrence, Eddie Murphy, Danny Fox. Just a guy that I don't really care for, Ricky Smiley. I don't think he's funny. I don't know his name, but the guy who played Joanna Man, Tyler Perry, he's not a comedian, but definitely a man who wore a dress. The list goes on. And there's this ongoing conversation amongst black people about but black men wearing dresses as like some kind of, I wouldn't say Illuminati, but like some kind of malicious rite of passage that the powers that be make them do in order for them to be successful and the reason that they do this is because they want to emasculate the black man and because the black man is such a threat that we have to put him in a dress to remind him who who runs this shit and that's all bullshit <laughs> I really think it's funny that people still, like believe that because it's like it's so ridiculous. And the reason why it's ridiculous is one: when it comes to comedy as a whole of many races, not just not just us, but of many races and comedy, the mocking of woman is a common practice. Now, is it a good practice? I don't think so, but it's a common patriarchal norm within comedy okay we have mrs doubtfire and probably other people that i can't think of and maybe they're showing up on this screen right now because right now the names escape me because you know i have a hard time remembering white people's names but this is a common patriarchal norm in comedy now we can critique this patriarchal norm and why men feel that it is comedic to pretend to be a woman i think there's a better healthy conversation there we can talk about that but y'all won't talk about that. But we should talk about that. And then there's also this idea that put it on a dress, emasculate black men. We have heard this many times over. We have seen this before. We've had these conversations in our homes. This is not a new occurrence of this idea of emasculating black men. 
I have a very conflicted relationship to the word emasculate anyway, because generally people think feminizing something emasculates something. And it's like, femme is not less than mass. So what, so what you trying to say? I don't particularly use that word because of those reasons. But the idea that being or appearing as a woman or wearing a dress or being adjacent to femininity in any way means that you are less of a man is a flawed patriarchal idea that I want nothing to do with. All of these norms are faulty and a patriarchal norm such as doing these certain things emasculates you or feminizes you are things that actually are harmful to men in patriarchal structure. See, I'm not here to defend men because that's not, that's not my bag. There's other women who do that and that's not my bag. But for this particular conversation, I do have to dip into that bag a little bit. I need for men, um, or men, but I always talk to black men the most because those are who I'm in the most community with, to understand that all of those rules are made to keep you in line. Whatever the fuck your true self is, you're not allowed to be that because you're sticking to this patriarchal script that was not ever written for you or with you in mind. And then the other thing in that whole conversation about black men in dresses is people rallying behind saving black men from that. Cat Williams said that not because he actually cares about black men, but to shame the black men who have done that. That's all he was trying to do. And there are a few things that I think is important for us to be honest about. You have to be honest about us laughing at those characters. I am not going to front like Shanene was not funny to me. I'm not going to front like Wanda and Living Color wasn't funny to me. I'm not going to act as if I did not laugh at those characters. Now, obviously, I was younger. I've grown up. My politics has grown. And I see things a lot different, right? So my relation to that is a lot different. I think a more healthy critique, Black women that Black men are okay with presenting generally it is a certain kind of black woman they're okay with presenting they're okay with presenting a ghetto girl an exaggerated ghetto girl they're okay with presenting a sapphire that black women exist in many different ways so i don't say those types of black women to separate myself from them because this sapphire in me this ghetto you know as i'm not i don't i want to make sure i don't do that i want to make sure you don't leave this video doing that as well but those are like kind of the only depictions of black women that generally these men do when they put on these dresses and it's always steeped in like massage noir that's a healthier conversation to have that's a conversation i would rather us have that's a conversation that actually makes more sense. There's that, and then there's also the implied transphobia when it comes to these men in dresses. The, the implied massage noir and implied transphobia, because you make it something comedic, these people, something that folks don't have to care about, and which in turn makes harm more likely to happen to these people because they're a comedic character. Seeing these black women in dresses and the characters that they typically could display can imply or can create a climate that says it is okay to inflict harm. It does allow people to depict women, trans, cis, comedically, and not take women who exist in these ways. So women who exist as a sapphire, women who exist as ghetto, women who exist as loud, to not be taken seriously because it's just comedic relief and not an actual real character with levels and layers and and depth and i wish the conversation shift there more why are we talking about this false emasculation of men when that's not even the case that's not what's happening at all right there what could actually shift this and actually be the resolve for this is if we lean more into dismantling gender period and gender presentation period. I'm learning so much as I dismantle gender because what it does or what it's pushing for us to do is to allow people to exist not on a binary. So if you can be a man and exist wearing dresses or shoes or things that are considered for women, if it doesn't mean that anymore, then that stuff doesn't matter anymore. There's a liberation in that. There's a freedom in that to just freely exist without a patriarchal gender structure telling us how we're supposed to look, 
telling us how we're supposed to dress, telling us how we are supposed to be in the first place. Now, if that structure didn't exist, and if that structure wasn't here, then something like a comedian wearing a dress for comedic whatever would not matter. And it also would dismantle the misogynoir and the transphobia that are implied when those characters exist. Just want to challenge us a little more to expand that conversation. This is a conversation that I really don't think men should be centered in. If anything, they're the ones that are contributing to the harm because they're contributing to this culture of not taking these particular kind of black women seriously. Also, it's contributing to massage noir and transphobia not being taken seriously. Then it further contributes to these ridiculous patriarchal standards of gender that we have to follow. And if we do not follow them, that means we are inherently defective. That is the problem. So I just want us to push and decenter the black men out of this comedic dress conversation when there's other ways that we can look at it. We can look at how gender presentation is a prison for many people and we, we got to break free of it. So I'm hoping <laughs> that I said something coherent here. Happy New Year. I didn't say that. I know that was kind of rude of me. I haven't seen y'all since December on the YouTubes. So Happy New Year. I hope you had a new year. I hope you're doing all of the things that make you feel good in the new year. I have a lot planned for the year. Patrons know what's going on with all of that. And yeah, so I'm going to end this video. You are a bad bitch. You are enough. Stay fly. And I will see you in the next video. And go to dress if you want to.